Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about insulin and the most common signs of insulin resistance. Towards the end of the video, I will also give strategies to make yourself more insulin sensitive. And uh, before we begin, I request you to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you can be notified every time I post a video. And on this channel, I post videos about nutrition and wellness in general. If you're interested in working out with me, check out one of my workout channels available both in Hindi and English. Just click on the link and it'll take you right to my exercise videos. All right. So let's talk about insulin. Now, what is insulin? Insulin is a hormone. It's a hormone that helps us store and build. It also has other functions in the body. But most importantly, and most relevant to this video, it helps us build and store what we eat. It transports what we eat inside the cells. So insulin is very, very important. But the problem happens when insulin is high all the time and that can lead to elevated insulin levels which can further lead to insulin resistance. So what insulin resistance essentially is that your cells stop responding to insulin. Insulin is saying, hey, I want to put these nutrients inside the cell. I want to put nutrients inside you. And the cell is saying, okay, I don't hear anything. I don't want to open up. So it's become resistant to insulin. And that's what insulin resistance is, very simply put. Now, why is insulin resistance not the best thing? It's simply not the best thing because a lot of health conditions, including diabetes, elevated blood pressure, elevated cholesterol, polycystic ovarian disease, have been linked with high insulin levels or insulin resistance. So there is a case for maintaining our insulin levels. Now, before we get to what we can do to maintain our insulin levels, let's talk about the top 10 signs that can tell you that you might be having insulin resistance. Now, the first is sugar cravings. If you're craving sugar all the time, then it might be a sign that you are resistant to insulin. And it could be because the cells are not getting any nutrients because insulin is not able to do its job and put the nutrients inside the cells. So the cells are saying, hey, I don't have any nutrients. So it can lead to cravings and especially sugar cravings. The second is changes in the skin, dark patches behind the neck or in other places can be a sign of insulin resistance. Insulin can increase the production of melanin and melanin is what colors the cell. So increased pigmentation can happen creating these dark patches. So that's the second sign of insulin resistance, dark patches behind the neck or in other places that you did not have before. The third is skin tags. Now, if you didn't have skin tags before and you started to develop these, this might be a sign that you are resistant to insulin. Fourth is excessive thirst. If you're thirsty all the time, despite drinking a lot of water, it could be that you're insulin resistant. And the same goes for excessive hunger, which is the fifth sign of insulin resistance. And again, this happens because the cells are not getting the, th those nutrients because insulin is not able to do its job. So it creates a signal in the body saying that, hey, I'm hungry. I'm hungry all the time. And that can lead to excessive hunger. The sixth sign is hormonal imbalances. Insulin, after all, is a hormone connected with many other hormones in the body. So we can see this situation where hormones start to go out of their regular levels. And one common instance is a health condition known as polycystic ovarian disease, which is linked with high insulin levels. So that's the sixth sign. The seventh is elevated blood sugar. And this is simply because 
the food we eat, especially carbohydrates, go into our body and are converted into a usable form of energy. Not a usable form of energy, but converted into glucose molecules and other nutrients as well. And insulin is responsible for transporting glucose into the cells. And when it is not able to do that, in the condition of insulin resistance, glucose builds up outside the cells in the bloodstream creating high elevated blood sugar. So that is the seventh sign of insulin resistance. The eighth sign is having abdominal obesity. Weight around the midsection can mean there is insulin resistance. The ninth is elevated blood pressure. And the 10th is elevated cholesterol levels. So these are the 10 most common signs of insulin resistance that you should be mindful of, that you should be aware of. And now let's talk about what you can do to become more insulin sensitive or lower the levels of insulin. So for that, we need to understand a few things first. The first is that insulin is secreted in response to food. When we eat something, our body secretes insulin. Now the amount of insulin our body secretes depends on the type of food we eat. Carbohydrates in general, this is an oversimplification, but carbohydrates in general have more of an insulin response than say other foods. So carbs are number one on the list, then proteins and the least insulinogenic foods are fats. You can also look at something known as the insulin index to know which foods are insulinogenic and which foods are low on the insulin index. So coming back to this, since we know insulin is secreted in response to the foods we eat, by altering what we eat, we can alter the insulin sec secretion, right? And since carbs release the most insulin, what we can do is lower the consumption of carbs. Typically, a low-carb, high-fat diet can help reduce the insulin levels in our body. Now, the second thing to do is fasting. When we don't eat food, our body does not need to secrete insulin. And fasting for about 12 hours a day gives us a break gives the body a break from secreting that insulin. So aim for about 12 hours of fasting, eating your dinner at 7 p.m., breaking your fast at 7 a.m. in the morning can be one way of doing it, or eating dinner at 9 p.m. and breaking your fast at 9 a.m. is also doable. So giving your body a break from food for about 10 to 12 hours is a good way to get that insulin back in check. And the third thing is to exercise. Both aerobic exercise and strength training have shown to make people more insulin sensitive. And that is what we want when we become insulin resistant. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and do hit the subscribe button, do hit the like button, share it with someone you think needs to watch this video. And if you wanna work out with me, watch me on one of my workout channels. Both Hindi and English options are available and I'll put the link in the description box as well as it'll be somewhere in this video as a eye icon. So have a great day and I will see you in one of my other videos. Bye.